Bass Reeves was an inspiring individual who went from being an enslaved black man to becoming an esteemed American law enforcement official. He made history as one of the first black deputy U.S. Marshals, and specifically, the first one in the western region of the Mississippi River. Reeves dedicated his efforts primarily to serving in Arkansas and the Oklahoma Territory. His journey began under the ownership of a man named William Reeves, a farmer and politician. Like many of the enslaved of the time, Bass took on his owner's surname while his first name came from his grandfather, Bass Washington. Starting as a water boy, Bass eventually grew into a field hand, working alongside his parents. In 1846, William Reeves moved his operations, family, and slaves to Grayson County, Texas. Bass stood tall at six feet two inches. George Reeves, William's son, became William's valet, bodyguard, and personal companion. When the Civil War erupted and Texas sided with the Confederacy, George and Bass joined the fight together. However, during the war, Bass and George went their separate ways. Some accounts suggest they parted due to a dispute in a card game, where Bass allegedly beat up George. Others believe Bass left after hearing about the liberation of slaves. Regardless, Bass sought refuge in Oklahoma, where he sought shelter with the Seminole, Cherokee, and Creek. During his time there, he immersed himself in their customs, languages, and tracking skills. Bass also sharpened his firearm skills, becoming remarkably quick and accurate with a pistol. Although he considered himself only fair with a rifle, he was frequently barred from competitive turkey shoots due to his exceptional skills. After being freed by the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, Bass was no longer a fugitive. He left territory and purchased land near Van Buren, Arkansas, where he flourished as a successful farmer and rancher. Shortly after, he married Nellie Jenny from Texas, and together they started a family, <laughs> raising ten children on their homestead, <laughs> consisting of five girls and five boys. The family lived joyfully on the farm. During this time, it is said that Bass occasionally served as a scout and guide for U.S. Deputy Marshals heading into territory on behalf of the Van Buren Federal Court, which had jurisdiction over the region. Reeves' life took a dramatic turn when the Federal Western District Court relocated to Fort Smith, Arkansas, and Isaac C. Parker was appointed on May 10, 1875. This move coincided with the territory, becoming a haven for lawlessness, attracting thieves, murderers, and individuals seeking to evade the law, as there was no federal or state jurisdiction in the area. One of Parker's initial actions was to appoint U.S. Marshal James F. Fagan to lead a force of around 200 deputies. When Fagan learned about Bass Reeves' extensive knowledge of the region and his ability to speak multiple tribal languages, he wasted no time recruiting him as a U.S. deputy. These deputies were tasked with restoring order in the Indian Territory, and Judge Parker's orders were clear. Bring them in alive or dead. Working alongside other legendary lawmen like Heck Thomas, Bud Ledbetter, and Bill Tilgman, Reeves set out to ride the expansive Oklahoma range in pursuit of outlaws. Encompassing approximately 75,000 square miles, the United States court at Fort Smith was the largest in the country. When searching for outlaws, a deputy would typically travel from Fort Smith with a wagon, a cook, depending on the specific criminals they were after. Their journeys often took them to places like Fort Reno, Fort Sill, and Anadarko, covering a round trip of over 800 miles. Despite being illiterate, Reeves' lack of reading and writing skills did not hinder his effectiveness in apprehending criminals. Before embarking on a mission, he would have someone read him the warrants and commit the contents in order of the warrants to memory. When asked to produce a warrant, he never failed to select the correct one. Reeves, an imposing figure always atop a magnificent white stallion, quickly earned a reputation for his bravery and success in capturing or eliminating numerous outlaws in the territory. He was easily recognizable with his signature large hat and impeccable attire, his boots shining with a gleaming polish. Known for his politeness and courteous demeanor, Reeves was also a master of disguises and frequently employed various aliases when necessary. Whether appearing as a cowboy, farmer, gunslinger, or even an outlaw himself, Reeves always carried two Colt pistols, positioned for a swift draw with the butts forward. Being ambidextrous, he rarely missed his target. Leaving Fort Smith with a pocket full of warrants, Reeves would often return months later, hurting multiple outlaws who faced charges ranging from bootlegging to murder. Through the fees and rewards he received, he made a handsome profit before spending some quality time with his family and returning to the range once more. The tales of Reeves' captures are the stuff of legend filled with intrigue, imagination, and incredible courage. One such story recounts Reeves' pursuit of two outlaws in the Red River Valley near the Texas border. Gathering a posse, Reeves and his companions set up camp 28 miles away from where the fugitives were believed to be hiding at their mother's home. After carefully studying the terrain and devising a plan, Reeves disguised himself as a tramp, concealing his tools of the trade, handcuffs, pistol, and badge under his worn-out clothes. On foot, he reached the house dressed in ragged attire, wearing old shoes, carrying a cane, and sporting a floppy hat with three bullet holes. 
Upon reaching the residence, Reeves spun a tail for the woman who answered the door, claiming that his feet were throbbing from being chased by a relentless posse that had left the three bullet holes in his hat. Expressing his hunger, he requested a meal, and she kindly invited him inside. As he ate, she began sharing stories about her two outlaw sons, suggesting that the three of them should join forces. Pretending to be weary, Reeves agreed to prolong his stay. As the sun started to set, he overheard a distinct whistle from beyond the house. Shortly after, the woman went outside and responded with a whistle of her own. Before long, two horsemen arrived, engaging in a lengthy discussion with her outdoors. Eventually, the trio entered the house and she introduced her sons to Reeves. After exchanging tales of their criminal exploits, they all agreed that teaming up would be advantageous. Sharing a room for the night, Reeves kept a watchful eye on the pair as they fell asleep, and once they were snoring deeply, he handcuffed them without waking them. As dawn approached, he roused the boys and escorted them out of the house. Their mother followed them for the initial three miles, hurling curses at Reeves throughout the journey until he delivered the duo to the awaiting posse men at the camp 28 miles away. Within days, the outlaws were handed over to the authorities and pocketed a substantial $5,000 reward. A significant achievement in Reeves' career was the capture of the notorious outlaw Bob Dozier, known for his versatility in committing various crimes, ranging from rustling cattle and horses to robbing banks, stores, and stagecoaches, as well as murder and land swindles. Dozier proved elusive to lawmen. Despite numerous attempts by others, it was Reeves who ultimately succeeded in tracking him down in the Cherokee Nation. When Dozier refused to surrender, a gunfight was seen on December 20th, 1878, resulting in Reeves killing the wanted woman. In 1887, Reeves found himself facing charges for the murder of a posse cook. Interestingly, he stood trial before Judge Isaac Parker, the same judge he had encountered countless times when apprehending outlaws. Fortunately, Reeves had the support of United States Attorney W.H.H. Clayton, who was both a colleague and friend. In the end, Reeves was acquitted of all charges. In 1889, after being assigned to Paris, Texas, Reeves set out to capture the Tom Story Gang, a notorious group of horse thieves. He patiently waited along their known route and caught Tom Story off guard with an arrest warrant. Panicking, the outlaw drew his gun, but Reeves was quicker, shooting him dead. The rest of the gang disbanded and vanished without a trace. In 1890, Reeves successfully apprehended Greenleaf, a notorious Seminole outlaw who had evaded capture for 18 years and was responsible for the deaths of seven individuals. That same year, Reeves embarked on a pursuit of Ned Christie, a renowned Cherokee outlaw. Despite burning down Christie's cabin, Reeves and his posse were unable to capture him. Tragedy struck Reeves in 1896 when his wife passed away in Fort Smith. The following year, he was transferred to the Muscogee Federal Court in Indian Territory. In 1900, Reeves remarried a woman named Winnie Sumter. Amongst the many tales of Reeves's heroism, the most challenging manhunt he faced was in 1902 when he had to track down his own son. After delivering two prisoners to U.S. Marshal Leo Bennett in Muscogee, Oklahoma, Reeves received devastating news. His son, Benny, had been charged with murder after killing his wife out of jealousy. Despite the warrant lying on Bennett's desk for two days, the other deputies hesitated to take action. Undeterred, Reeves insisted on taking responsibility for finding his son. Two weeks later, Reeves returned to Muscogee with his captured son and handed him over to Marshal Bennett. Benny was tried, convicted, and sentenced to life in prison at Kansas's Leavenworth Penitentiary. Eventually, with the help of a citizen's petition and an exemplary prison record, Bonnie Reeves received a pardon and lived the remainder of his life as a law-abiding citizen. Reeves was renowned for his unwavering composure in any situation, never displaying even the slightest hint of excitement. Fear was an unknown concept to him. In 1907, as state agencies assumed law enforcement responsibilities, Reeves's tenure as a deputy marshal came to an end. He then accepted a position as a patrolman with the Muscogee, Oklahoma Police Department. Throughout his two-year service in this role, no crimes were reported within his jurisdiction. Unfortunately, Reeves's career was cut short in 1909 due to a diagnosis of Bright's disease. He passed away on January 12, 1910, and was laid to rest in the agency cemetery at Muscogee, Oklahoma. However, the exact location of his grave remains unknown as it is on private property and unmarked, according to Find a Grave. Described as absolutely fearless and driven solely by duty, Bass Reeves was a man universally respected, as his extensive and glowing obituary attested. During his remarkable 35-year tenure as a deputy United States Marshal, 
Reeves solidified his place in history as one of the most effective law enforcement officers in Indian Territory. With an impressive record of apprehending over 3,000 outlaws, he played a crucial role in bringing order to the lawless territory. Despite having taken the lives of 14 individuals in the line of duty, Reeves maintained that he only resorted to shooting when necessary to protect his own life and fulfill his responsibilities. There is ongoing debate regarding the possibility that Bass Reeves served as the inspiration behind the iconic radio and later television series, The Lone Ranger. Numerous striking similarities between the character and the real-life legend support this claim, although it remains a subject of contention. Nevertheless, our inclination aligns with the belief that Reeves was indeed the inspiration for The Lone Ranger.